seven WMMS Cleveland. It's time to give stuff away. It's time to give that stuff away. It's time to give stuff away. Give stuff away. All right, comedian Andrew Schultz is on tour this fall and coming to play the State Theater at Playhouse Square. It's going to happen Friday, September the 20th. You can go to playhousesquare.org for uh, info, buy tickets for all the shows they've got coming through. This pair for you right now, if you are a caller 10, for Andrew Schultz this fall. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Alan Cox. A drummer. Not even a real musician. He just makes a noise. If he played the violin or the piano, anything that made sense, but... The drums. 100.7 WMMS. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? What? what you got? Diabetes. What? Yeah. Di- di- diabetes. What you got? If you have diabetes what? and you're on Medicare, your testing supplies may be covered. What? What? Here's how it works. What you got? Diabetes. What you got? Diabetes. What you got? Diabetes. I three. Diabetes. What you got? Diabetes. What you got? Diabetes. What you got? Diabetes. I three. Dessert with Splenda and fresh pink boogers, man. Might have to take some insulin before I'm in a coma. I'm knocking bitches out with my gangrene aroma. I can't smoke chronic because my toes are necrotic. I gotta maintain my circulation so I don't get another amputation. I, they call me Peg Leg, the diabetic pirate. I'm in the hospital helicopter so much that I can fly it. Shooting up a chill, it's medicine, not narcotics. Hope this rap thing blows up so I can get some new legs that's bionic. I got that sugary ripple in my cup. Shots of insulin, that's what's up. I'm angry, this is all fucked up. I have diabetes. I got that sugary ripple in my cup. You know, he mentions that he can't smoke chronic because of the diabetes. But I was reading a thing that they said that they've done extensive studies now that are showing a link between cannabis and diabetes prevention and better blood sugar control. I mean, it's hard to fathom a substance that makes you want to eat junk food would be linked to diabetes prevention, but I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. They're always finding new things, I new signed up uses. to be on the show. I thought you were a scientist. I, no, I'm not a scientist. Oh, Misled us all. No, it's a typo. I meant to write not, and it, I wrote very much so. Very much so a scientist. But no, that's not... Um, I want to get you naked and see the little spots. I think a slight hunchback scoliosis is kind of... Science is a liar sometimes. I got, I have diabetes. So obviously, you know, people who smoke pot, they do it for, you know, pain reduction and reducing inflammation, all that. But they've been doing a lot of studies with it um, linked to diabetes prevention. So who knows? These are strange times. These are exciting times. For people who are either uh, pot smokers or diabetes sufferers. You know, somebody sent me the story about um, at Berlin Fashion Week. I think that's what it was. Somebody, some guy made I Heart Ozempic shirts, and a lot of people thought that that was in really bad taste. I'm like, well, A, if there's any industry known for its focus on health, Oh, that's right. It's the fashion industry. Yeah. Mm. And secondly, Ozempic is still diabetes medication. Just because everybody's using it to get skinny, it's diabetes medication, right? So what's the matter with hearting it? It can literally help your heart. They tell you in the thing. Right? You mitigate your diabetes. That improves your heart function. But everybody's going in, oh, my God, toxic values. Oh, my God bad taste yeah well you guys are the ones that started shooting yourself up with it to lose weight to the point where at the beginning of this whole thing talk about it uh, for the (laughs) the, but at the beginning of this whole thing this semaglutide craze you know people who needed the medication couldn't get it because all the fatties wanted it so they think that it's distasteful and of course uh People behind the shirt say, they're missing the point. This is satire. 
Satire is a great word that now gets used by a lot of people who have no idea what it is, but it sounds like a good get-out-of-jail-free card for criticism. But, uh, boy, uh, I'm sorry, where did my invitation to Berlin Fashion Week go? You're not a scientist, so they uninvited you. That's the beauty of Berlin Fashion Week. They don't care if you're a scientist. And I made it very clear to them. Yeah, it was a typo on your guys' form when you joined the show, but I fixed that typo. No, I sent it to them. I'm not a scientist. Science. And they said, well, okay, well. Well, there's also a typo. It said, uh, you got to give us more money. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, sent I, I got to get I it. I sent yeah. that one. Yeah. You didn't send it to me. You sent that to your boy, Bobby Pitts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Science. We're not on speaking terms right now. Oh, well, I've never met the man, so... I've never been on speaking terms with him. At least you're on speaking terms with him. Uh, I didn't speaking say terms implies were. that yeah. there, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it implies that there's been some conversation before. So, um, yeah, I feel like the Ozempic thing um, has not run its course, but people have long since moved on. That's, I'm sure, why they made these T-shirts. What's going on out there? You hear that? That's me. Oh, that's people you. Directly outside my door. I was going to say, we definitely don't have that many people here that could yeah. be making oh, all that noise. Mm. I'm right by the bathroom. Common, yeah. Common gathering point. The bathroom. Uh-huh. People stand outside and laugh. Are they laughing at what they saw in there or are they I just. I have no idea what they're doing. By I'm the bathroom. Here. I'm in uh-huh. here working. I can uh-huh. go ask if you want. No, no, no. I'm uh, to worry about it. So, um, pot smokers, again, big diabetes news this week. You pot smokers. And again, you can't um, take the results of one study and apply it fully to your life. They're just looking into these things. Like uh, me and the rest of my, uh, the people in the science community normally do when we study these things. I was simply just not allowed to discuss our findings until now. So that's the exciting part. Secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets hurt someone. Well, what if that's fun? Alan. I don't know what you're singing. It's just a rhyme about not telling secrets. From oh. the Bible. Yeah. From the Bible. <laughs> Ring around the rosy. Leviticus 14.10. <laughs> Alan, have you heard the new Imagine Dragons song? Who's your favorite band? Might change your mind about them. I bet it won't. Let's go. I'm all for this. I love it. Well, it's been yeah. out for a couple of months, though. I mean, the album just dropped, but the, I think the newest song has been out for a minute. I, I have not caught it. Never been spared. They say tomorrow's never promised. Wait, what? This isn't okay. real. It is. Uh, that, the, that's the, thought, that's that's the song they thought was going to change your mind on Imagine Dragons. It sounds like every other song. Mm-hmm. I'm so tired of truck commercial rock bands. So, yeah, no, uh, Imagine Dragons, of course, the new album dropped about a week or so ago. They just announced their tour, so I'm sure they'll have a bunch of sellouts. The answer to the question, what if Coldplay pretended that they had funk? Imagine Dragons, you will have to travel. They are not coming here. They're going to play Chicago and Detroit and Toronto and That's all right. everywhere around us. But you know what? I think we'll live. So if that's the song you're talking about, sir or madam... Um, that's the only one I know that was uh, the the single that they dropped from the new album a few months ago. But uh, listen, they have a lot of fans. They don't need me. They don't need me. Uh, that singer never has a shirt on, and nothing they do goes that hard. So I don't know why the shirt's never on. But listen, these guys are ex Mormons, right? They're they're looking to bust out, exploring his sexuality. There you go. Quote unquote exploring. I think he's got it figured out. But uh, yeah. Well, he had to explore to get there. Huh? He had to explore to get there. I he guess some people do, out, right? Man. Yeah. If you're if you're not uh, fortunate enough to know right from the jump, uh, you got to dig around a little bit. Alan, I have diabetes, and the munchies are the only reason that I rarely smoke. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, there's going to be decisions that need uh, to be made. 
They just pulled Horizons Part 2 off of the release calendar. We were talking... We're talking about Kevin Costner's oh, yeah. uh, two-part uh, epic Western saga in theaters. And um, Horizons 1 did not uh, get people. And you can't really blame Kevin Costner on the one hand. I'm always amazed that that, many, uh, that that kind of time and resource is put into a movie like that. But he's also kind of looking at the state of the country and going, boy, there's a lot of people out there who are... Uh, just love those kinds of stories, you know? Hey, remember when white people ran everything? One of those. Mm -hmm. So he's, I don't know if he already shot part two or what. I think I've read that they were shoot, they had shot them back to back. You know, like Back to the Future. When they go back to the Western times. Love that one. Never saw it. Good. It's but, on Netflix uh, right now. Is it? Yeah. All right. That, those might be fun ones to watch with the with Nora. The kid? Yeah. Is that the one that Mary Steenburgen is in? Yes. Because she's pretty cute. But, I mean, watch the whole trilogy. Really. Well, I've seen one and two. Well, but, I I've mean. I've just never seen three. If you've never watched it with Nora, I, she, you know, you can go a couple of movie nights, get through the Back to the Future franchise. Those are good ones. Yeah. It's still, I don't know that I'm ready yet. I'm sure she could handle it, but I don't know that I'm ready yet to explain how the guy's mom is trying to make out with him in the first one. She'll figure it out. You think she'll figure it out? We all figure it She's out. She's like, wait a second, that's the... Yeah. I mean, we did all figure it out, but um, still, it's creepy. Well, but she didn't know it was her son. She just huh. thought it was some hot dude. Yeah, but I guess. He didn't give in. He wasn't like... Now this that would have made it a better is movie. Here's my it's chance. That crazy. <laughs> that <Really>? shouldn't. <laughs> that would have made it a better movie. I love Back to the Future. See, I was mad that they replaced. I love Elizabeth Shue, but I liked the girl who played his girlfriend in the first one. It was an actress named Claudia Wells. I don't know whatever happened to her. She was so hot in that first Back to the Future movie. And then I don't know what happened, but they recast with Elizabeth Shue. And I like Elizabeth Shue a lot. I don't know. Was she in the third one, too? Yeah. She's the girlfriend in the third one? Just a little bit. She doesn't have... She does the most in the second one. Okay. And then in the third one, she's just sleeping on a... Like porch, and then he wakes her up and he's like, "See me on the porch for a little ride." They go for a little ride. Oh, they don't hit needles, or they they do a drag race with needles. It was played by Flea, and uh, if he would have drag raced him, he would have crashed into a Rolls Royce, ruined his life. I see. Boy, there's it's so confusing. It's Not if you watch it all. <laughs> If you know what's going on, all right. And they did they ever make a fourth one? They just made the no, three. No, 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 no. They did. I, I, I would like them to not make a fourth. One. Okay. I think it's all. They didn't up leave just fine. They didn't leave the window open for more. I mean, they sort of did because at the end of the third one, he built the you know Doc Brown built a new time machine uh, powered by steam. That's a <sighs> flying train. Yeah. So like anything's possible. Okay. Is Christopher Lloyd dead? He is not. He's not. No. Nope. He's old then, huh? He's old. Yeah. He's old. He's yep. always been old. He's one of those That's what Morgan I'm he's Freeman been old guys. Since the page master. Yeah. Yeah. He's. I mean, he was old in. Uh, Back to the Future. He looked old. Yeah. As hell. But he's yeah. probably like he's probably like my age in that. Movie. He was mid fifties. He's eighty five now. Okay, he's mid fifties yeah. in that. All right, so he's yeah. Or mid forties, I guess. Right, that was forty years ago. Yeah, it was around there. It was yeah. eighty five when the first one came out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd, boy, a guy's been married like six times, 85 years old. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to keep working. Every few years, you got to hand over half your crap. These guys, boy, they just can't stay away. See, that's how you get lured in. A lot of these celebrities, where they keep getting married, it's because they keep getting divorced. the gifts. Oh, the gift. Well, oh. the <laughs> divorced, yes. <laughs> yeah. That precedes it, but they mm -hmm. keep getting the cool gifts. And they go, well, there's no other situation in which I'm going to get gifts. So I'm going to need to get, obviously, that, you know, the cycle of marriage and divorce is a very organic one. But I am fascinated by the people, and, and it is very much the domain of people who have means. Uh, but 
I'm fascinated by those celebrities who get married a whole bunch of times. Because they love getting married, boy. They don't like staying for, married. Looking for love, man. Yeah, but you can looking date. For a connection. You can date. You can you can date, and they're not going to leave you because you're rich. So you can date, and there's no rules anymore. It's not the 50s. You know, they're like, well, we can't have children. We're not married. You know, all bets are off now. Even if you're an old celebrity, you're still living in 2024. You know, Larry King, Christopher Lloyd, all these people have married, you know, Elizabeth Taylor famously back in the day. Some people remarry their ex-wives and husbands and then get re-divorced because they forgot why they hated them the first time. They go, oh, maybe this time will be different. And sometimes it is. All bets are off. But the people that are like, you know, you go to somebody's Wikipedia page and it will show you all their spouses in the years that they were married. And some of these people have six and seven names. You're like, wow. And that's the only common thread that all those women have. For four years in the 70s, I was married to Christopher Lloyd. And they're like, depending on what decade they were married in, they go, who? The guy from Taxi. The guy from Taxi. Who? The guy from Back to the Future. Who? The guy from Clue. The guy from Angels in the Outfield. Didn't see that one. But I believe you that he's in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is Danny Glover. All right. Now you want to see it? Now I want to see, see it. it because Dan Glover's in it. Is that the movie do. where they put a bomb in the toilet and he's sitting there with his pants down? Is that Angels in the Outfield? What? I'm too old for this shrimp. No, no, that's uh, oh. Lethal Weapon Two, I believe. Oh. Very that, different movie. That's a different movie. Yeah. Oh. It's pretty, pretty close. All right. Uh, hey, Mary, I've got some vagina news. Do you want to hear that? Perfect. Okay. Vagina news. Listen, if nothing else, as a public uh, steward of the public airwaves, I like to make sure that I'm uh, availing myself of the latest information for you gals. And they're finding all kinds of toxic heavy metals in tampons, oh. in feminine hygiene products. Why would you tampons do this to yourself, tampons women? Tampons are bad for you, dude. Huh? Tampons are not good for you. I feel like so many problems come from tampons. Well, I mean, when, you know, when they were dealing with like TSS or whatever in the 70s, that was a yeah. whole other thing. But- I felt like that had largely been. Although, if all this stuff's in it, they're finding uh, unsafe levels of lead and arsenic and um, in the tampons. From what we can figure, there might be three different explanations. One would be if the metals showed up in the raw materials. Uh, tampons are mainly comprised of plant-based materials, so they could certainly make their way into soil and into these crops. The second way would be contamination during the manufacture and production of tampons. Mm -hmm. The third route could be if they're added. Metals do have some properties like antimicrobial or odor controlling, um, and they also can be used to help with the smooth insertion of the product. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Smooth insertion. What is... You don't want it to be rough. You want a smooth insertion. What metal has odor control properties? Aluminum. Aluminum, yeah. That's why oh, is all it... the deodorant. Hey, everything. look at you. It's causing the, uh, Alzheimer's. Right. Right. That's why all those old people forgot where they put their deodorant. Mm -hmm. And they stink now. They stink. <laughs> So, ladies, just uh, this is why, and again, uh, my parents, I, I grew up in a weird house, but my mom knew what she was talking about. And when she used uh, wool tampons. Hand woven. Hand woven. That's right. By you, I heard. No. Yeah. Nope. It was your chore. I had to work to buy my own loom. Alan, weave my tampons. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what it was. That's what it sounded like. But then, like, aren't you supposed to well, made wait, them out yeah, of potato you, sacks? You use that rubber cup, huh? You can. There's the shiwi or the diva cup. diva cup. There you go. Yeah, the shiwi so where can, they pee in it, so you can pee standing up. <laughs> yeah, no, you ever try one of those, cup. Mary? No. Why not? Why would I? I don't know. So you can pee on the subway. No. On the subway. <laughs> Absolutely not. There's not Who, is she Elton John? No, there's not as many. Uh, public restrooms in New York City that are accessible. So if you got to really go, you got she wee, and then you can just uh, pee down in the subway. Wow. I've done that. You could wear we'll pads. get to it. Hmm? You could wear pads. Then you crinkle like a diaper baby. Hmm. Well, yeah, back in the day, it was all about uh, sanitary napkins. Mm -hmm. And um, then they were like, oh, just put this up there. Sure, it's yeah. made of wool. But, uh, you know, 
Everyone you know, there using different. the corn husk dolls. <laughs> Uh, you couldn't really count on a smooth insertion then. but oh. So just be aware, ladies, uh, toxic heavy metals in your tampons. You know where else we get heavy metals around here, Bill, is Saturday night. Now, what a, that's, a, that's a transition. That's right, baby. We do our metal show. It's called Two Hours to Midnight. Now, this is for Mary. I'm going to play these guys on Saturday. They're called Dying Fetus. Oh, this is one of Brian's. I know. Gave away some tickets. They're going to come through. I'm going to play those guys. I'm going to play uh, Nile and Creeping Death. Going to play Guar and Mudvayne and Converge and Thunder Horse. Oh, so much good stuff. Saturday night, two hours to midnight. It's me. It's Corey Roddick. It's Pet Butler. Starts at 10 o'clock. Ooh, what's this one? It's not bad yet. We'll get there. I don't hate this. Ah, it's so good. When it's like that, I don't hate that. Well, when he starts growling, you won't like that. That's when I don't like it. Why? Why do you like this? Well, all these guys' early work, though, all their lyrics were about uh, Egyptian deities and things like that. So it was very, you, re- you really had to <clears throat> have an Indiana Jones streak in you if you dug those guys. But um, diametrically opposed to what we were just talking about, two hours to midnight is fully tampon free. So no toxic metals in the show. No. Got a lot of female listeners for the show. Mm-hmm. But I just want to let them know. Keep telling yourself. When it comes to your feminine hygiene products, you're on your own. I can't tell you what to do. Nobody should tell you what to do. And yet I, they do. I'm sorry? And yet they I do. do. I oh. love Oh, yeah, they do. But you. They shouldn't. But please don't touch my vagina. Hey, um, I'm going to have a key for you that hopefully will fire up that buzzard bike we're giving away. Brand new Harley from Budweiser and uh, MMS. 450 is when you'll get the key from me this afternoon. Want to text for something? 35192 is how you get me there. And you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. From the Mr. Hero Waffle Doodle. Some good food, waffle doodle, where's that? Weather-